Before I begin, I just want to say that what we're trying to learn are generalities. We're going to learn the rules and not the exceptions. As you go through uh, the video, uh, there will absolutely be different times when you're going to say, hey, what about this disease? How about that disease? Sure. Uh, there are always exceptions and you know, uh, th th that's what you learn during your uh, residency and beyond. But where you guys are starting out, you want to learn the general rules. And then you can build on and learn the exceptions. Okay, guys, now let's get on to nerve pathology. So for starters, what is a nerve disorder or a nerve pathology called? Well, it's called a neuropathy. And neuropathies, although they're very, very common and uh, people think these are very easy to diagnose, these are actually extremely difficult to diagnose, extremely difficult. Not that you can't recognize it, but to identify what type of neuropathy and how you classify it, it can be very difficult. And due to its difficulty, because we're trying to get a framework for how to um, diagnose these in the clinical setting, uh, there is not any clear um, set of signs or symptoms uh, that I can tell you which are the hallmark um, uh, signs and symptoms. Rather, let's talk about the different types, and uh, we'll have some quote-unquote hallmark symptoms for each of the different types. First off, we have to remember that there are three kinds of nerves, okay? Uh, and there's one thing that every student messes up. So the first type is sensory nerves. Good. Second type is motor nerves. That's easy, sensory and motor. Now the third type is what? The third type is autonomic nerves. So when someone has, let's say, a generalized uh, polyneuropathy, usually they have sensory motor and autonomic neuropathy or autonomic dysfunction. As an example, diabetes. We all think of diabetes as the painful distal sensory neuropathy, but Diabetes can cause motor involvement, so we can have a motor neuropathy. Diabetes, as we all should know, causes autonomic dysfunction, gastroparesis, sometimes urinary retention, sometimes constipation, sometimes orthostasis. All these are autonomic dysfunction caused by an autonomic neuropathy from the diabetes. Okay, now that we have um, the three types of neuropathy identified, sensory, motor, and autonomic, let's start talking about the different types of neuropathy in broad, broad terms. The first one would be the symmetrical distal to proximal neuropathy. This is the one that everyone thinks about when they think of uh, neuropathy. So your typical diabetic neuropathy causing a painful uh, feet, slowly wor you know, working its way up proximally, um, but it can also involve the arms. So you can have the numbness and tingling and pain distally in the hands, slowly working its way up. But that's only the sensory component. Don't forget, there's also a motor component. So you can have weakness, distal weakness that slowly progresses up. And as I just mentioned earlier, autonomic neuropathy along with the symmetrical generalized polyneuropathy. And then you've got to think about another type of neuropathy, which would be a mononeuropathy. And this would be, as an example, an entrapment neuropathy, such as carpal tunnel or an ulnar nerve entrapment, um, perineal nerve entrapment. And these are actually different types of neuropathies. Now, if you have multiple mononeuropathies, so you have a carpal tunnel and an ulnar nerve entrapment and a perineal nerve palsy, well, that would now be called a mononeuritis multiplex, multiple mononeuropathies. And then you can put another big bucket of hereditary neuropathies. And these would include the Charcot-Marie tooth type neuropathies. And another one you should think about is Fabry's disease, F-A-B-R-Y, Fabry's disease, which is basically um, 
a alpha galactosidase a deficiency which is a lysosomal storage disease okay so these are some of the um, inherited um, neuropathies uh, which is separate from the uh, acquired symmetrical polyneuropathy which is separate from uh, the mononeuritis uh, multiplex and along with this is uh, you can put another big bucket of uh, um, etiology for neuropathies in terms of how you think of neuropathy. So instead of just thinking about what types of nerves are involved, um, you can also think about what kinds of different things can cause neuropathies as a separate bucket unto its own. And this would include stuff like lead poisoning or alcohol um, or, I guess, diabetes, hyperglycemia. Or how about B12 deficiency? Um, so you know, there are many, many ways to classify um, neuropathy. So um, that's why this is so, so difficult. And finally, before we conclude this video, um, there's one other type of neuropathy that uh, many, many students mess up on. So before I tell you what that is, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, and that would be, let's say, uh, a Bell's palsy. What's a Bell's palsy? Seventh nerve palsy, right? So seventh nerve palsy is... Uh, paralysis of the muscles controlled by the seventh nerve or the facial nerve. Now that sounds pretty obvious, um, but how do you classify it? So the seventh nerve comes out of the brainstem, pontomedullary junction, um, and goes down your face and supplies the muscles of your face. So is this a brainstem lesion? Or is this a brain lesion? Clearly, the seventh nerve is inside the cranial vault. So is it something that happens inside the brain? So is it a uh, brain issue? No. Um, this is another neuropathy. So cranial neuropathies should be thought of as a peripheral neuropathy. All cranial nerves are peripheral nerves. Don't forget that. Except for cranial nerve 2, all the other cranial nerves are peripheral nerves nerves, peripheral nerves, very important. So if you have uh, multiple cranial neuropathies, guess what? That's a type of mononeuritis multiplex, right? Um, test question for you guys. What's a common cause of a bilateral Bell's palsy? You've got to think about Lyme disease. Is that, is that really common? It's not that common. But is it common on your test? Absolutely. I don't know why they love to ask that, but they ask it on every single board exam. So um, there you go. That's the uh, quick and dirty summary on neuropathies. Next up would be nerve root disorders. Okay, same concept. Uh, what's a nerve root disorder called? What are the hallmark signs and symptoms of a nerve root disorder? Uh, and this is a lot more manageable than neuropathy, so this should be pretty straightforward for you guys. Um, so think about this, and we'll see you on the next video.